Hello, welcome back. We are at day two of the 06 Mini transmission removal clutch job. So I wanted to take a minute and first of all, acknowledge the fact that I spent a long time yesterday with my back toward the camera. I'm gonna try not to do that today uh, because, you know, unless you clicked on this link to look at my butt, um, which I, you know, if you did, that's not that, this is not that kind of video. Um, I'm assuming you did not do that. I'm assuming you did that to see how this was done. In any case, going to work on that today. Uh, also, the, uh, just want to kind of rehash some mistakes that were made yesterday. Uh, the battery was a, was a pretty, pretty big glaring mistake to, uh, to go so far as to, uh, remove the ECU without disconnecting the battery is, um, is sometimes uh, foolish. We, we won't know if I caused any damage there until I go to put everything back together and go to start the car and uh, it won't start. I'm not going to know that yet. But anyway, hoping that I didn't do any damage there. Um, some of the other dumb things I did yesterday, like for instance, having to do with uh, the... Um, uh, this power steering reservoir and this heat shield and the overflow tank. I screwed with this for, I don't know, what, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and in reality, all I ended up doing was simply bending up that heat shield. That's the type of thing that an experienced mechanic would know. That is one of the reasons why I've said that the difference between an inexperienced mechanic and an experienced mechanic doing the job can be, you know, up to 25%. Because a guy who had done this would know not to spend all that time screwing around with all that and just bend up the, uh, the heat shield, and it would be fine. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, uh, the subframe. So uh, the way I have my floor ja uh, uh, jack stands here, uh, the subframe came down, and it was setting down there in the middle of those three just and it, and it was fine um but because of the position of those three i couldn't i couldn't take it out it was kind of physically stuck in that spot and that may have been fine it may have been okay to just leave it sitting on the floor um but when i come in here uh and i bring in my engine hoist to um pick up on the transmission a little bit, I'm thinking I'm going to want as much room as possible under here. In fact, that jack stand may be a problem. Uh, we, we may end up suspending this mess from above. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But right now, the only thing holding this engine in is this mount right here. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so uh, what I did this morning was I actually put the floor jack down here and a big old piece of wood up under here, this frame member, raised up the whole car again, pulled that jack stand out, and then scooted the subframe out, put that jack stand back in, put the thing back down on the floor. Again, that's another 15, 20 minutes where a guy who knew what he was doing and had the right tools and equipment would, would not be would not have spent on this job. Anyhow, so uh, I did go out and get myself some more swivels yesterday. So we're going to remove um, bell housing bolts. Uh, I've already taken a couple out. To, two of them are out here on top, but we have one here and one down there that you can see much, easy, much more easily from below. I took out this one that was hiding under here and there's one right here, and then there, there should be, I'm assuming there's going to be another one down there. Yeah, I can't see it. Maybe I'll see it when I crawl underneath there, but I'm assuming there's one holding that clip on. Um, there's something holding, holding this clip right here on, I'm assuming that's a bell housing bolt. Uh, but what I did find, 
Um, oh, look at all this white stuff. It's all over the place under here. Is that all from the water pump? I bet that's all from the water pump leaking. Anyway, um, um, what I did find when I was underneath was that it looks like the starter has to come out because the starter looks like it has some bell housing bolts through it. Um, by the way, this heat shield uh, does go all the way back to the cat, so you're not going to pull that off um, from right there. Anyway, so um, I'm going to take the camera down underneath and show you. Well, once again, I'm not going to be able to I can be able to actually watch it come apart because I don't know how to have the camera and me and tools and whatnot underneath. Anyway, stand by. All right, welcome back. Here we are on the nice cozy underside of the car. Uh, as you can see, I've already taken out the half shaft and the carrier bearing that took literally moments. Um, so. Once the subframe was clear, that job is actually real easy. Uh, so here's the starter motor under here, and there's a bell housing bolt right there. And I'm assuming there's another bell housing bolt maybe up on top of the starter. So we have to take off this guy. What would that be? That'd be, this looks like oil. This would maybe be oil pressure, uh, oil temperature, possibly. Um, oh, also, before I forget, this is the these are the linkages. Um, there are clips in this bracket that you just have to kind of squeeze together and these push out. So you can get those things out of the way. That's hung up on something up there. Anyway, um, that's, that's how you take the linkages out. So what we're going to do here is um, take, out, gotta take out this bolt for the starter. Got to take off the wires figure out the wiring is kind of dark under there. I may have to take off this heat shield as well. Um, but we do have to get the starter out of there. And, you know, I'm thinking that uh, this starter is so hard to get to, we, we may just replace the starter uh, just simply because uh, it is definitely a, a common wear item and uh, it is real, real hard to get to. Uh I haven't even seen how much they cost, uh, but unless these things are a thousand bucks, um, I'm going to put a new one in there, I think, just just because. Okay, well, I'm going to get this part of it finished, and I'll bring you back as soon as I'm done. Well, that was a hassle. The starter motor is held in by this heat shield. You have to take off the heat shield to take the starter motor out. And the heat shield is held in place with this screw. The exhaust pipes run right over this thing, and that screw is very hard to see. You use a 10 millimeter wrench to get that screw out, and then you can get the heat shield to come off, and then you can take the starter out. Uh, the other thing that was really uh, quite the opposite of fun um, about this was getting this upper bolt. Uh, you can't even see it. You have to kind of feel around for it. I mean, you know it's there, but, uh, but anyway, that's where we're at. So we are down to the final two contestants. There is a um, bell housing bolt right there and there is a bell housing bolt that was a little tricky to see under here now to get at that one you need one of these because you gotta kind of get at it at an angle kind of like that so i'm gonna put you back in the little tripod here i'm gonna try to get that bolt on undone Try to get you as close as possible. Yeah, I know. I'm going to move that light. Oop. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. And I keep uh, keep tripping up my own works here. You know, I I know there's a lot of options out there for cordless 
lights and cordless tools and I mean they're really neat but I just I don't like trying to manage batteries if batteries die and they need replacement I don't know I'm, I'm not really sold on the benefits of cordless stuff I mean kind of I'm, I'm getting there I'm getting there of course by the time I do get there I'll probably be dead okay let's give it a shot so I thought I had my, I do. I'm going to use my ratchet here. I'm going to do this one by hand because I only have three eighths. only have this socket and three. Wow, that was loose. Oh, man, that was, that was hardly even tight. Oh, my God. There was one of those um, bell housing bolts down underneath. It was so damn tight I needed to bust out the half-inch breaker bar to get it off. Wow, this was amazingly loose now how do I get it out of there it's just it's just real tight in here with wiring harnesses and whatnot I kind of picked up the harness a little bit and trying to wiggle the bolt out how do I well I mean it can stay it's sitting there. <laughs> How am I going to get that out of there? Well, you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> it can stay there. Won't hurt anything. Here, I'll show you. Where's my screen? Come on, screen. There you are. So... Here's the bolt. Let me get a pointing device. There. So that's the bolt I just took out right there. And this wiring harness is kind of in the way. So I just kind of tuck the head of the bolt underneath. That's that going to be okay? I think that'll be okay. I don't know. We'll find out. So, the only one left, the only bell housing bolt left, is that one right there. That's the one we're going to try to do next. But before we do that, better get out the, uh, the engine hoist. All right. Here we go. I've got my air ratchet ready to go. I've got the engine hoist. And we're connected to this eyelet here that's cast into the transmission. It's held up with a chain. Um, I believe I've got everything disconnected except for that bolt. Now, apparently this transmission is going to have to drop to the floor because we have these lines here. And we have this mount still here. In other words, it's not going to come up. I think it has to go down. Um, so once it once it sets on the floor, we can just scoot it along the floor. I don't think this transmission is very heavy, um, but I, <laughs> I I don't want to find out the hard way. It's okay. Let's get you all set up here. I can hear my air hissing out of the stupid. I need to replace this air coupling on here. All right, here goes. <laughs> wow, that is a very long bolt. Okay, make that noise go away. All right, the, the tranny did move. So we've got it. Let's see if pulling up on it a little bit, or letting the weight down a little bit. Well, let me see if uh, just let me pry on it a little bit between those two sort of mating surfaces. See if I can't get it to come loose. 
there's already a gap here. Here, I'll show you. Whoop. We're okay. So, can you see that? Can you? There. There's already there's already a gap in the transmission. That gap was created when I took that last bolt out. So pretty sure that means the transmission's loose. I'm totally free now. I should be able to just drop on the ground. Okay, it's dropping. Okay, almost there. Mental note, use a longer chain next time. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Man, this is a... Did I mention it's a tight fit? I think, I, I don't know if I told you that before. Oh, I hung up on something? I am, there's a wire, damn it. Take the tension off of it. There's another wire. What did I miss? Oh man, I hope I didn't break something. Where's that wire going to? Is that a gear selector? This, where are you going to? Do you know where you're going to? Where is it? There it is. Okay. I'll show you. Well, yeah, I'll show you. This is the wire I forgot. That guy. Right there. Can you see it? I guess that's a maybe a neutral switch. Not sure. Let's pull that out. Oh, there's still a lot of tension on it. I gotta put you back here. Huh, was that was that thing holding up the entire transmission for a moment? <laughs> hey. clip pull it out okay that wires out doesn't look like it got damaged and the wire might have got broken we'll see but it's out it's out now that was exciting okay yeah, I'm starting to see why they were saying it made all kinds of rattling noises. I'll show you in just a sec. All right, so now I'm going to worry about my chain. Uh, am I hung up on something else? Ooh. It yep, was hung up on this axle half over here. I am now dangling free. Okay. So I now need to put the transmission on blocks because my chain is too short. Let me grab a couple blocks here. And I'll sort of 
reposition my chain to allow it to just set on the floor. Let's see if that works. There we go. Now I'm going to make my chain a little bit longer. And then we'll slide this transmission out on the floor. And I'll show you what I'm looking at because, wow. Make that lead nice and long. <laughs> may have made my chain a little too long this time that's all right we're gonna have this get this hoist out of here in just a second get these blocks out of there Hoist out of here. Tanny is on the floor. Get this cord out of the way. Put this thing back out of harm's way. Getting hungry. Must be getting on toward lunchtime. Of course, it doesn't need to be lunchtime for me to be hungry. I think we all can understand that. All right, this is cause for celebration. Transmission is not heavy at all. <laughs> Whoops, leaking oil. Well, that's one way to do an oil change. Wow. <laughs> all right. Wow. Let me show you this. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. All right, so the first thing I saw when we took the transmission and started to take it off, I gotta take off this thing again. Hang on, bear with me. There, now you can see. Sorry about that. Okay, look at that, man. All this damage. That's from something just bouncing around, absolutely bouncing around the uh, clutch cage. All those, all these, oh crap, dropped the camera right in the oil. I understand that's good for lubrication. Uh, all of these are stripped. These are the screws that you take the clutch off with, and they're all stripped. That is going to be a nightmare. Here's the... Oh, better get some oil dry here. Look at that. This is why we're here. It's the throw-up bearing. 
this is just this is just trash. Look, there's pieces of bearing, pieces of bearing cage right here. But yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's done. Good lord. Well, I'll pull that out a little bit later, but that is obviously obviously the problem. So, the clutch itself may actually be okay. Um, yeah, and I don't know if there's... Can I tell? I don't think I can tell just by looking at it. I don't think so. I can't see in there well enough to tell. Well, the... Uh, Whatever it was that was banging around really gouged it up here. Is that a part of the flywheel? That might be part of the flywheel right there. I can't really tell. Um, yeah, that is going to be part of the flywheel. So we may end up replacing uh, the clutch in the flywheel anyway. So, yeah, getting these off is going to be a nightmare. These are all boogered up, every one of them. Oh, that's going to be no fun. I'm just going to have to grind them off. That's all. So we're going to replace the clutch. Uh, we're probably going to replace the flywheel. We, we might replace the throw-up bearing. I don't know. I could go either way. Um, but this is definitely the problem. Oh, and uh, the other thing we're going to replace is the, uh, the rear main seal. While we're in there, we're going to replace the rear main seal. And... I'm going to replace the water pump because we know that that's leaking under there. There's a real good shot of that little weep hole. Coolant coming out of there. So that's done. Um, and I'm going to look into uh, replacing the starter. Now let's see. It is, oh, time. So it is now 11 o'clock on Tuesday. So we started at 9.30 this morning, so that's an hour and a half. And um, a good 45 minutes of that was simply messing around with that damn starter. Anyhow, so that's an hour and a half today added to the four and a half hours yesterday. So that's six hours to get the transmission out. Uh, we're still going to be looking at a couple hours to get the clutch out. Let's say two more hours to get that clutch off and get the flywheel off and all this stuff. But uh, in any case, so let's say eight hours to take the uh, transmission out, take the clutch out, and probably go with 10, uh, 10 to 12 to put it back in. So let's just uh, you know estimate on the fat side, 20 hours for the whole job. That's two and a half days. Okay, thanks for watching.